So for those still using the M1 MacBook Air like myself, you may be wondering if it's worth upgrading to the M4 model or not, and so I thought I'd compare these and help you decide. So let's begin with the biggest change between these two MacBooks, and that is the design. The M4 Air really fits the Air branding better because it's so much thinner, and the rounder corners do make a difference because the sharper corners on the older Air did scratch and dent pretty easily. The smaller bezels are also appreciated, I forget the notches there most of the time, and I do want to mention the larger function row is quite an underrated change since it does make the keys and the touch ID sensor much easier to reach and press. You also get new color options. The M1 model comes in the standard space gray, silver, and gold, but with the M4 MacBook Air, you get the option to go with midnight, silver, starlight, and this new fancy sky blue. The new design isn't perfect though, because not gonna lie, I do miss the wedge. It didn't make the type of experience on the older Air that much nicer, and it was a unique design element that separated it from the rest of the range. And so it's sad the wedge is dead. And I do want to take a moment to give the M1S some credit because this design is still very premium. By the way, if you're enjoying the content, a sub to the channel would be awesome. It would bring you the latest about Apple right to subscription box, so please consider it. Join the Saran Bike gang now. Let's move on to the performance, and if we compare the benchmarks of these two machines, we can see M4 does have substantial performance gains over the M1, mainly because it offers a higher amount of faster cores but I would be lying to you guys if I said this made a huge difference when it comes to regular usage. This really goes to show how monumental M1 was, because after nearly five years of this being on the market, data usage between these machines are very similar, and I've not noticed anything massively different performance-wise. The encoders and decoders M4 has are nice when exporting videos, but that's really the only difference I've noticed. I know the M4 does offer ray tracing, which does improve the gaming experience, but then again, I never game on a Mac and most don't game on their Macs in the first place. Macs aren't really the ideal choice for gaming. But M1 is still powerful enough to run Apple Intelligence, and so that should tell you how great this chip still is. And if you're wondering about throttling with these two fanless Macs, for my usage, which is slightly above the average consumer since I'm editing videos every single day, I've experienced no performance issues, and I appreciate the fanless design to be honest. Especially when I'm editing, I'm glad I don't have to hear a stupid fan in the background. Now one great thing about the M4 MacBook Air is that it does come with 16 gigs of RAM as standard, and a max of 32 gigs. The M1, on the other hand, came with 8 gigs that could only be expanded to 16 gigs. So if you did have the base M1 Air, you may notice the benefits of having more RAM in the base M4 Air, and 16 gigs of RAM will help future-proof the machine. Let's next talk about the display, and I'll be honest, apart from a being slightly bigger, the M4's panel is near identical to the M1. Both are LCD, the M4 model does offer slightly higher brightness, but it doesn't make a huge difference indoors, and both have P3 support and True Tone. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing, because the M1 Air does have a terrific display that I've had zero issues with, and so I'm happy with the M4 panel as well, and it's great for watching movies and TV shows on, but it's also color accurate for editing videos. Moving on to the camera, mics, and speakers, the M4 Air does offer a center stage camera, which means the webcam can track you as you move, which is pretty cool, and does offer desk view when presenting things, Though the 720p webcam on the M1S still isn't all too bad, mics are about the same which means both are crystal clear for calls, though the M4 Air does support voice isolation modes if you are in a noisy environment. And surprisingly, I do kind of prefer the front firing speakers the M1 Air has, but the M4 MacBook Air speakers are solid as well. And do remember you get spatial audio support with the M4 Air, which I do actually notice when using AirPods. You also get a headphone jack on the M4 that supports high impedance headphones. Keyboard-wise, as I said, I like the larger function row the M4 has, but essentially, this is the same Magic Keyboard the M1 had, so that is to say it's the gold standard, and the same goes for the trackpads. And in case you're wondering if Touch ID is faster with the M4 Air, I did test that, no, that's not the case, though to be fair, the M1 scanner was already good enough. 
Now Wi-Fi and Bluetooth wise, the M4 Air does support the newer Wi-Fi 6C and Bluetooth 5.3 standards, but speeds and connectivity are about the same on both in my testing. Coming to ports, I think the big upgrade with the M4 MacBook Air is MagSafe, because right now with the M1 MacBook Air, I only have two USB-C ports, and so if one's used for charging, I only have one other for peripherals. With the M4 model, I can charge the Mac separately with the MagSafe port and then use the two Thunderbolt 4 ports for peripherals, which can come in handy. And do remember if you get the right brick, the M4 MacBook Air does charge faster. And that conveniently brings us to battery life. Now do note the M1 Air I'm using already has many cycles and the health is at 85% and so as one expects, when comparing a new computer with one that's been used for years, the new computer has better endurance. Who would have figured? But yeah, for anyone upgrading to the M4, the new battery inside will mean you get better battery life. However, do remember the M4 does offer the same 18 hours of endurance that the M1 was also advertised with. And so if there was a new battery inside the M1 MacBook Air, there would be no difference. So that's basically everything covered and on the whole guys, I've got to be honest, whilst the M4 Air certainly would not be a bad choice, and I can see why one would consider upgrading from the M1 Air to this, my older Air still chugs along just fine. And I think many still using the M1 MacBook Air will have the same thoughts. It's a dependable and rock solid machine even today, and so I do feel I can get more usage out of this before I decide to upgrade. Ultimately, there are only two factors you should consider. Number one, are you finding the performance limiting? I still find M1 plenty fast, what I do, and I did upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM, which has helped future-proof it. But if you did get the base 8 gig model, maybe often running into RAM issues, in which case upgrading to the M4 would be a great decision because that now comes with 16 gigs of RAM as standard. There are times now where I do have to top up the M1 Air to get to the end of a full day of work, and I think more than the M1 being an issue, it's going to be the battery life that will become more of a hassle for me because I will probably have to keep charging it more and more often. I could replace the battery, but that is pricey with the Apple Care. And so I think if you're in that situation where your battery has degraded and it's becoming an annoying burden, you can consider upgrading to the M4 MacBook Air because that not only comes with a new battery inside, but also a new design, MagSafe better performance, and the new center stage camera. Personally, I feel like battery life hasn't become as big of an issue for me yet, so I'm gonna hold on to my M1 MacBook Air for the time being. But it is a great time to upgrade if RAM or battery life has become an issue, especially since the M4 model has got a price cut and is back to 999, which was the retail price of the M1. So if you paid 999 a few years ago for the M1, you can now get a much better machine with double the amount of RAM for the same price, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.